This podcast is a member of the Place to Be Nation family. Visit us at placetobenation.com, the only place to be in your pop culture world. Place to be Nation. Welcome to This Week in Sports, brought to you by your This Week in the NFL crew. I'm your co-host, the Cowboy. It's been a while. Been been a you know couple months here. Joined by the the real uh, brains of the operation, John D'Amato. What's happening, John? Cowboy. A long time no speak on uh, on this level. Uh... Uh, I guess uh, th- three months later, congratulations on another uh, a Boston championship. They happen like uh, every other week now. Uh, Thank uh, congratulations. you. Congratulations. Yes. Uh, it was a very boring, shitty Super Bowl. That, that, it's, uh, but I guess that's good for you guys because that's the only thing that anybody could come out and criticize about it was that the game was, oh, the game was so lame and everything. It's like everybody's just uh, so beaten down. They can't, like, say, oh, the Patriots, you know, cheat and this and that. They just have to they just have to say, oh, that was a lousy, that, that was the only thing that they could uh, get on you guys was that the game was so bad. I know, I know. I mean, it was not, it was not like, uh, it, the game was not a work, or, a work of art, but it was a, um, another victory. The Patriots defense played real good, and... You know, the offense did just enough. So, hey, I'll take what I can get. You know, there was no uh, – it was very exciting as a Pats fan to watch. I mean, it, the way the game went, I felt like, you know, the whole game, I felt like we're going to hold these guys to 10 yards of offense. Then they're going to hit one uh, one big play to Brandon Cooks, and the game's going to be tied. So, There I, was that uh... – it, 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 only because the, cause the way the Rams uh, got lucky in the championship game, not got lucky, but uh, you know, got that referee's break. I, I think there would have been a, a more of an outcry when uh, I think it was. Uh, you know, we're going back like three months now. The memory's a little foggy now, but I think at, at six three, the Rams got like a, a real questionable uh, holding call that that really stopped their their Dang. drive, which that would have been. Uh, there, there would have been more of an outcry, but but uh, everybody was like, "Fuck it!" They're, the Rams, uh, you know, they, they got well their deserved. Breaks, so. Well deserved. Yeah, they, they, exactly. they, you know, you can make the argument that they uh, they maybe shouldn't have even been there. So, oh yeah, with that, and uh, plus the yeah, the way that quarterback played, it was uh, nobody's feeling sorry for them. Yeah, but we wanted so it's a little Super Bowl talk there. But like like John said, we haven't been on the airwaves here in a while, a few months. Um, Little life getting in the way. Apologize to our loyal fan base, but we're we're back, baby. We're back now. Um, so what we wanted to do tonight was, you know, spend a little time talking about the NFL off season and some of the moves. There's been quite a few moves since we uh, since we had our last show, and then give you guys a little uh, little baseball. I'm sorry, NBA playoff preview, and then we'll see what happens if there's if there's time left. Maybe we'll even talk a little a uh, little little baseball. What do you say, John? Uh, definitely. I'll, I'll at least uh, sneak a couple, couple minutes in. Not six hours worth, but uh, we'll, we'll at least keep a couple of minutes in. Yeah. You said NFL, and you said NFL offseason. Did anything happen? Uh, I yeah, mean, as giant, yeah. Me as a Giant fan, uh, uh, did anything happen with the Giants? Yeah, so that's what, cause kind of one of the first things I wanted to talk about. Giant, Giants making uh, a big, gosh. big trade. Big trade. Trading Odell Beckham Jr. over to Cleveland for uh, Jabril Peppers and some, and some picks. Personally, not a big fan of this deal. Uh, wide receiver, premium position. He's a great player. You know, top five wide receiver. A little bit of a diva, but he seems like he really, you know, kind of goes out there and gives a shit. And what great wide receiver doesn't have a little bit of an attitude, right? I, I, I don't know what they were thinking here, John. When you, uh, any rationale behind this or just uh, ready, fire, aim sort of deal? Well, that's the typical response from uh, from the non-giant fans that this was uh, the shitty uh, shittiest trade of all time, and uh, Gettleman is the laughing stock of the league and should be fired immediately. But uh, I'm actually uh, I'm actually approving of the deal because uh, Mr. Beckham is is just uh, is, is just too many problems, uh, and and uh, the problems aren't worth it when you when you only win eight games in in two years, and he's always. Uh, a source of headlines in the in the wrong uh, in the wrong way. So if if they could uh, lose with them, they 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 said he's not worth the headache, and we'll just wind up uh, losing without him. They got a nice uh, couple uh, 
a, a sixth and a 17th. They got two picks. They got a better deal than uh, than the Steelers did for Antonio Brown. So at, at, at this point, he just wasn't worth that. He's a selfish player. And also, he's uh, proved to be brittle the last couple of years where uh, he's he's uh, had a lot of injuries and that, hasn't been able to stay on the field. And, and, and uh, also this whole year, there was just a, it seemed like every week there was speculation. Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? So he has to uh, toughen up and become a, a little more durable uh if he, you know, if he wants to to be a success and uh, and to be one of the uh, top receivers, so uh, I'm uh, I'm actually pleased with the deal. Uh, anybody, it seems like any Giant fan over 30 is uh, not pleased with it, and also anybody who's not a Giant fan is uh, treating it like uh, you know you know the Giants right now, the laughing stock of the league. And uh, until they uh, draft better and uh, come up with a better team, then uh, they'll they'll remain the laughing stock of the league. But uh, that's okay. At least uh, it'll be a lot less quieted because there was a. A situation when in one of the last games he played, he he had left the uh, the field with about two minutes left, and of course all the uh, the reporters, uh, Fox, Aaron Andrews, guy, oh, oh, Odell Beckham's going to the locker room, you know, with an undisclosed injury, and they found out that he uh, he went for an IV because he was uh, dehydrated, and then they asked why, and uh, they asked him after the game, and he said, well, I don't really like the taste of water. And, uh, you know, if you're paying a guy, whatever, 15, 20 million dollars and, and the, the guy can't hydrate himself. I mean, that's something that that you deal with uh, your your, uh, your nephew. Uh, you have to make sure that he drinks a Gatorade or something before his jujitsu class. You know, you know, that's something you, you treat your son or your nephew, but not somebody you pay uh, 15, 20 million dollars. And you have to worry about whether he likes uh, the taste of water or not. That's uh, it, it got to be a little ridiculous. I think at that point, that was when uh, Mr. Mara and the Giants brass said, OK, uh, bye, Felicia, on this guy. That's an interesting take, John. I don't uh, the unexpected. I thought um, thought you would be. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I thought you'd be against the trade. So I don't think it's the worst trade of all time. I mean, they they at least got a pretty good haul for him, like you said. Um, tough to trade. Tough to get real value in trades in the NFL. <coughs> I'm sorry, fans. I don't know what's going on here. The throat's closing up on me. One second. No problem, Kyle. But I'll, I'll take it from there. At least uh, uh, one, one good th- another good thing the Giants did that I approve of is the uh, where they uh, they uh, pieced out on Landon Collins and uh, to to pay a safety uh, over uh, 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 ten or twelve million a year. That's uh, that's that's another thing. When you're a losing team, uh, that that's uh, that's wasting money to, to pay a safety that Completely much. Completely so agree there. Completely Washington agree Washington there. took the heat on that. So so they did get a. They they got a nice uh, you know peppers which is, is not costly which uh, who's uh might, might be uh maybe maybe not as a dominant as a Landon Collins but it, but, it's, but it's in the same uh, in the same range as a yeah, Collins the, the as far as quality move safety makes sense the Beckham move for me is like even if you're in a rebuild like he's still young so he's young and and a great receiver and I know he's got some of the you know the diva the diva receiver stuff going on but it's just so tough it's such a tough position to find a guy like that that i i I wouldn't have made the deal i would have i would have tried to work it out with him and um you know he's a piece that i would try to build around but if you if you were going to trade him at least they got a at least they got a good haul for him it's not the raiders trading randy moss for a fourth round pick or whatever they they traded him for i believe it was a fourth round pick so we'll see um We'll see. The Giants will have to execute at the draft. They'll have to execute on those picks, which is, you know, they they did they did well last year with Saquon, and we'll see if they can get a couple of studs. Who knows? Yeah, you think, I, you think yeah. they? The word is they're not taking a quarterback. You think that's all bullshit, or you think they're really going to not take a take a quarterback again? Yeah, I can't. Uh, the, the, there's no use for speculating. We're just gonna have to wait till the the 25th because uh, right now they're keeping things very uh, close under the under the vest. Last year they they made it obvious that they were taking Saquon no matter what. This year they're being very vague. Uh, they even had people uh, scouting Kyler Murray. They, they they they're doing their due diligence at least. They've had people scouting everybody, Haskins, but they're definitely not letting anybody know. Uh, what their uh, plans are and, and who they like. Uh, it's going to be one of those situations where we're not going to find out to the 25th. So yeah, all I mean, the they, speculation they, and and all that. As and uh, you know, giant fans are going uh, going crazy uh, on Twitter. Uh, there's actually uh, you know wild speculation that uh, Mrs. Uh, Russell Wilson, uh, but also known as Sierra, wants to uh, move to New York, and uh, so they're uh, they're currently clearing the decks for that. So the, that's just something that. Uh, there's, there's all craziness out there. We're not we're not we're not going to find out to the 25th. So we'll, we just have to kick back and wait. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like like you said last year was just you. It was almost like it was too obvious. Like maybe they were trying to blow smoke with Saquon, but that ended up not being the case. I know they were tied to Haskins early, but from what you're what I'm hearing and what you, what you what you can read is Haskins has maybe even fallen behind Jones on a lot of folks' radars, and it's maybe going to be the fourth QB to go now behind Murray, Locke, and um, and Jones. So very interesting. I don't think they're going to take a quarterback. That's my uh, that's my prediction. Yeah, yeah. I think and they're going to take because... either like Montez Sweat if he's there, or Ed Oliver. The, I, I I I think that's where that's where they're going to go. And also because uh, you know next year you got two and, and others coming out. So it's and and then the, the year after that there's Lawrence. So it's it, it's not like uh, you, you only get one chance to draft a quarterback. So it, I'm kind of surprised they haven't been tied at all to Rosen. It looks like the Redskins are, um, you know, the Redskins are the leaders in the clubhouse there. But Rosen, to me, would make a lot of sense for them. I, I think they tried to get for that. Uh, they tried to get Arizona to go for that second rounder, if they will. They, they or that number seventeen pick, but uh, nothing higher than that. But uh, once again, it's all speculation, uh, and they they're keeping things uh, quiet. Yep. All right. So we'll see what happens there. So the uh, the team Odell got traded to. Lots of moves. <laughs> so Cleveland is looking to really – they're doing the uh, the Chiefs-Rams deal, right, where they have the good quarterback on the rookie deal and they're just surrounding them with as much talent as possible. Um, worked really well for both the Chiefs and the Rams this last year. So now that offense in Cleveland, you have Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, best of friends. So I think that that played into it too and that they think that, you know – the, the two of those guys together, there probably won't be any um, any BS. So Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, David Njoku, Antonio Callaway, and then running back, it's uh, Nick Chubb, and they signed Kareem Hunt. I don't I don't really agree with the Kareem Hunt signing. I'm not sure why they did it. He's going to be out for the first eight games, and frankly, I think Chubb might just be straight up better after what uh, what I saw Damian Williams do in that Kansas City offense, but. Cleveland's kind of taking that that that's the 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 thing to do, right? You go all in when you have the young the quarterback on the rookie deal. Um a lot of people talking about them as a Super Bowl contender, John. What do you think? I had I met some uh, at our uh, WrestleMania tailgate. I had met some uh some gentlemen from Cleveland Browns fans and they were losing their minds. They are they are going bananas. They are they are elated and uh and God bless. I, I mean, if any fan base deserves it, it it's them. But uh uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, you, you just can't get uh, like an, an all stars and put it together. It may take a, a year or two to put it together. Plus, you got a, a, a first year coach. But uh, but but definitely, what they reiterated is how, how the uh, professionalism and uh, and the performance of uh, Baker Mayfield, which is what it always comes. They're told what we always say: when you got the quarterback, uh, you could uh, you could find the rest of the pieces. Uh, so it's a lot e- it's a lot easier to uh, to get into contention when uh, when you get that quarterback uh, position situated. So everything and will you're fall not to place. Him anything. Uh, right. <laughs> so, but uh, th- th- it's going to be interesting whether they you know they could build up their. Uh, a, a solid defense to go along with the, all the offensive weapons, and and also whether uh, Beckham will. I don't think Beckham will be the distraction that he was in New York. I, I think just from the start that uh, they let him uh, they let him roam free and do whatever he wants, and uh, and nobody told him no. And I, I think now that he's going to learn that you know he's he's not perfect, and he, and he, uh, nobody's expendable. And I think he's going to go into Cleveland with a little bit of attitude and and help that. Unfortunately, it took. Uh, it, it took them to, you know, fuck up on my on my favorite team, but uh, you know that's just being uh, selfish. And, and uh, but but uh, I think he's going to get it together on on his second uh, on his second team. Yeah, and I mean, especially if they win, I think he is the kind of, uh, you know, he at least strikes you as the type that the winning could possibly cure some of that stuff that he that he's got going on because he's, you know, he's nothing if not competitive out there. It's not like he's a guy who's out there dogging it, right? It's just. It's uh, I, I think being on a winning team will help him, and being with his buddy Jarvis will also will also help him. So we shall see there. So a couple of other big moves: Antonio Brown. You alluded to this earlier, John. Antonio Brown to the Raiders. I don't think anyone's like hurt their stock as like a a person over a year period, just through like social media and. 
and and all that stuff, all the stuff. I don't know what I, like what's going on with Antonio Brown, but he went from a guy that you never heard a word about to you know forcing his way out of Pittsburgh, submarining, completely submarined his value. Like if they would have traded him at the beginning of the season, they would have gotten probably two first round picks for him, and they end out having to settle for next to nothing from Oakland. And even now, even after the trade, he's like he, but he's fighting with the Steelers on Twitter. He's calling out Juju Smith Schuster for no reason. The guy seems to have like kind of gone over the edge or something. I I feel like it it may end out being like uh you know how we feel about the Raiders here on this week in the NFL um, that this could be once great player goes to the Raiders and completely flops like that's what I see for him just flop flop city doesn't work out maybe he can go resurrect himself somewhere else but I think this is a this is not going to work out I not that I blame the Raiders for making the move but they didn't have to give up too much to get him but I don't see it uh I don't see it happening there there was a uh, I was I was uh, I was amazed at the uh how uh, t- guys from other teams really came to uh, really c- came out and then spoke out against him because uh, f- from what we see, it looks like Juju Smith Schuster is, uh, is is one of the uh, top uh, uh, teammates to have and one of the all, all around great guys. And th- that's why you saw a lot of uh, guys on other teams came out and they said that they're, they're going to be looking to you know get a, get some hits on Antonio Brown that that he really you know took a cheap shot uh, against the guy you know just cuz uh, the the guy was trying fumbled in a big game going for extra yardage and and, and that's like that that's like a no no uh, when you do that uh, i mean you could call guys out for you know not showing up to practice or missing a game and, and stuff like that but for just just calling out for a guy a guy out to, for fumbling just for trying to get extra yardage and uh, and especially an exemplary player that, which looks like a Juju Smith Schuster he hasn't had any disciplinary issues he's a quiet guy he's a He's he's a very uh, a popular player, and and that's what the, uh, the, the that's what a lot of the guys are, they're, they're they're trying to become. They're, they're trying to change the uh, the image of uh, of the the league that are, you know a lot of top players are assholes and stuff, which is which is kind of ruin the reputation of the the NFL. And uh, and, and Schuster is one of those guys that's helping to change the image, like Schuster and, and Julio Jones and stuff like that. But then there's always like uh, unfortunately the more more attention. In, it, we give to the to the Browns of the world that uh, you know run their mouth and get get more attention for for stuff off the field and and nonsense. So it, it's going to be interesting. But the the hey the, the Raiders got a bargain. Maybe if he if he stops the nonsense and uh, and gets it together, it could be a boost to to the Raiders because. Uh, I mean, it can't hurt him, you know. Yeah. But it and, just and, and it just seems saw... like a bad situation for for Antonio. You know, I mean, if he's. They're they're not going to be good. I don't think they're going to be good, and he hasn't really had a lot of losing in his career. And you see, some guys don't care. There was, a, as a matter of fact, there was a lot of uh, our, our mutual friend, Mister Rosero, for one of the Jets to uh, snatch up Antonio Brown. A lot of people don't care about you know attitude and all that. As as long as you know, if you could get a chance to get a great player, just get him, and uh, they'll they'll deal with the headaches later. So we'll see how it works out for the Raiders. Yeah, dink and dunk Derek I don't think is going to be great for him either. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, speaking of which, that's the other big signing, Le'Veon Bell to the Jets. Um, in a contrast to Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster, after that happened, Le'Veon Bell and James Conner had a nice little back and forth on, on Twitter, a lot of respect for each other, not 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 being an asshole. Um, Le'Veon Bell recently dropped a rap CD, um, if you haven't seen how Keenan Allen from the Chargers reacted to that, it was uh, it was pretty funny. It was worth uh, worth checking out. But um, I'll, I'll let you guys search that one out yourselves. But I really uh, I like the move for the Jets. They have a ton of ton of cap cap room. Same kind of situation. They have Darnold on the rookie deal. Surround him with what you can. And um, Le'Veon Bell certainly a great player. They probably overpaid him for his position, but is what it is. Um, he sat out the whole year and ended up not making any more money than he would have. <laughs> but um, I think in his mind, it's still a positive because he knew the Steelers were just going to run him into the ground. And he seems genuinely happy to be in New York. And it's a nice weapon for a, 
you know, for a young quarterback in Sam Darnold. So I think it immediately makes their team better. And he seems to be a, uh, you know, less of a head case than, uh, than Brown. What do you think of the move for the Jets? Oh, that was a slam dunk. Obviously a terrific move. Uh, they, they had, they got Buku uh, cap money and, uh, and, and nowadays they, they've raised the cap so much that it's really, uh, the, the, it, it's really not, not even an issue anymore, especially a team with, with so much, uh, uh, money under the cap at the Jets, but uh, 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 Le'Veon Bell, excellent on the field, but uh, not exactly uh, a financial uh, wizard. Uh, he turned down seventy, uh, at least seventy, from the Steelers, uh, and uh, he he wound up taking uh, uh, about uh, what was it guaranteed? About forty four, forty five, right? Was yeah, 45. yeah. So, so obviously, uh, he, he he it wasn't a good move financially, but uh, maybe, maybe the year off he'll recharge his batteries and. Uh, He'll, uh, he'll he'll get back to, to to being one of the top three running back and uh, yeah I uh, mean there's, there's another team uh, I mean uh, right right now uh, Jet fans are losing their minds along with the Cleveland fans uh, looks so it looks like we might as well just uh, call it right now Jets and Cleveland in the championship games I highly doubt that but for the Jets it comes down to Darnold I mean Baker Baker was better quite a bit better but Baker's also a little bit older right so. Darnold, they need Darn. They need to see a nice jump from Darnold this year, right? Where he went, you know, he was b- below average last year. Good young, you know, looked, looked, saw some skills there, but he was below average quarterback. If he can be, if he can be competent for them and make a nice second year jump, he's got a ton of physical talent, right? He's got all the tools. Then they could, in theory, contend for a playoff spot. But I think it really, really depends on him. Cleveland would be disappointed, I think. Not going ten and six or eleven and five, which is crazy to say, but that's that's the world we're living in. Yeah, with the Jets, of course they they have the elephant in the room, which is uh, the Patriots. Uh, so they have uh, they, they, their expectations are always going to be a little lower until the uh, uh, Mr. Brady and Mr. Belichick decide to move on with their careers. You know what? They're, they're, that's but, why that's why there's wild cards, John. Yeah, but but with, uh, you know, going back to Darno, I think you're you're a little you don't give him enough credit though. He's a, uh, for a quarterback, he he's a 21, 22. Oh, he's a kid. A quarterback's Absolutely. never played that young. You usually quarterbacks sit for four or five years and don't play till 25, 26. So for him to did what he did at 21, 22, very, very impressive. Very impressive. I, I, I got nothing but good things to say. But as far as the Jets, they still have a, a lot of other holes to clean up. Uh, they they uh they got Mosley for the for their defense, but uh, they didn't really boost their uh, offensive line uh, too much, and uh, they still got to got to come up with uh, somebody like a, a dominant force on the defense to get to the to the uh, quarterback. So they they still have uh, some issues. Well, they have a, they have a, they have a nice teams. high pick that they can do that with if they if they want to. There's going to be some pass rushers there at three. Yep. And Either, I, or, I I I I, did, I, I wasn't disparaging Darnold. All, all I was saying was. That, you know, given the choice to start with him or Baker, I think every team in the league would start with Baker right now. Right. I don't I think even the Jets would. would oh, sure. Be... All you got to all you got to do is look at the uh, the amount of wins. I mean, uh... right. And the numbers. I mean, just been Baker. Yeah. But Baker's a little, he's older, so he's a little more polished. That's all. That's all I was saying is Donald was a little raw last year. And for them to truly contend, he needs to be better. And he should be better because, to your point, he's he's just a baby, right? And we know. Yeah. How plus, guys grow. plus they got a plus they got a new coach who's uh, offensive minded, not a. You know. And and last year they had, they had a, a defensive coach, and uh, he was left in the hands of the you know the offensive coordinator. So this year with, with Gase, he should improve. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. So anything else? Anything else you wanted to uh, talk about with regards to the NFL, John, or should we move on? No, let's uh, move on, uh, please. Right. So before we move on, I want to tell you about some other stuff we have going on here at the Place to Be Nation Pop Feed. We had a busy week on the Pop Feed with a little something for everyone. First, Stephen Kelly, you're joined by Jason Sherman on the newest Songs with Friends. And of course, they talk about uh, Jason's favorite band, Bush. Also, Greg and Nick are here with the new Long Book Hunters edition of the Hard Traveling Fanboys, and they're exploring Shazam, the Monster Society of Evil. Oh, and also check out their third in, third anniversary special featuring Jim Ross, Andrew and Adam breaking down where the non-NBA playoff teams are headed in the newest NBA team podcast. Um, and I'd imagine they'd follow that up with some type of uh, NBA playoff 
um, spectacular as well. Andrew and Adam do a great job. It's a great show. If you don't listen to that, you should. Uh, the Marvel Age crew is here and moving into the first half of 1970. Right in your, uh, right in your prime there, John. Uh, Jenny and Tim welcomed Glenn Butler to the hot seat for this month's Talking Pop. And last but not least, Geek and Sassy couldn't let award season come to an end without the second annual Sassies. So Joe, go check out what uh, Jenny and Mirandy as fans had to say as they officially put a bow on 2018. Also, a new contest is being held over on Looking Forward, Looking Back. They'll be doing a summer movie wager based on how well you think you can predict how this summer's movie releases will do at the domestic box office. Everybody likes a good uh, likes a good pool, good contest, right, John? Definitely. Uh, I've been on uh, a lot of road trips already, and uh, the great podcasts on our uh, network uh, get get me through and uh, keep me awake. So what keep you, coming. What you need to do in that contest is pick the top ten movies in order of how you think they will finish in domestic box office gross. So you start at Avengers and go down from there. You'll also need to include three wild card picks as well as which movie you think will be the biggest bomb of the summer. Send your picks to iflbpop at gmail.com by Monday, April 22nd. Any movie that's released on or after April 26th is eligible with the tally ending on Labor Day, September 2nd. The winner of the contest gets to be on a future episode of Laugh-In Theater and pick the comedy movie of their choosing. So that's what we going on, have going on here on the Pop Feed. Now, on to the NBA, Mr. D'Amato. NBA playoff time, baby. One of my favorite times of year is the first round of the NBA playoffs. Just as good, if not better for me, than March Madness. You, you in that same camp? Roger, let, let me just get the, the selfish part over. But as, a, as a Knicks fan, I, I can't, I've been <laughs> looking forward to the NBA playoffs the only thing I've been looking forward to since uh, September is uh, May 14th, but uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, NBA player, at least the uh, – and especially the Eastern Conference. Uh, I, I, let's just get this uh, this first round over with it. I want to I get the, uh, the the Eastern Conference semifinals with uh, where it's going to be Boston-Milwaukee and it's going to be Toronto and Philly, and they're both going to be seven-game classics. And the winner of those two series are going to meet in the Eastern Conference Finals, and that's going to be another seven-game classic. Uh, and I'm going to be enjoying the hell out of it. Those four uh, teams especially, they're all very uh, equal. Uh, they have stars. There's a little of everything. And, uh, yeah, I'm re- other than uh, May 14th, I'm looking forward to that. So I guess that, that, that was going to be my first question <laughs> I'm, I'm see, sorry, Roger. Yeah, let's, no, let's, yeah, don't be even, sorry, let's, my let's friend. Not, I love the enthusiasm. Even, yeah, let's not even. Uh, I don't even want to waste too much time. You know, go going uh, one by one. Uh, I, I, if not a sweep, all those uh, f- the top four series will be uh, either four or, or five games, including the four or five, which is which should be the most competitive. But unfortunately, uh, bo- uh, without Victor Aladipo, uh, Boston's just going to roll on on ND two. That's a- I, I, I hope you're right as a, as a, as a, as a big Celtics fan. Um, of these series, I see the Indiana-Boston one with the most potential for a six- or seven-game series just due to the way the Celtics – one, the Celtics aren't going to have Marcus Smart, which is a big deal for the Celtics. It's, it's, it's not as big as Victor Oladipo not playing, obviously, for the Pacers. But he, Marcus is, is a huge part of the Celtics, and he's really the heart and soul of the team – and um, not having him is tough. So the the Celtics have had a very underachieving year. Um, that a team like Indiana, who plays well as a team, who is you know maybe a little bit of overachievers, a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, they're, they're the kind of team that could beat uh, that could beat the Celtics. So it would not surprise me at all if this goes six or seven. Um, the other series. Completely agree with you. Um, Toronto will whack Orlando, and Milwaukee will really, really whack <laughs> Detroit. Um, I could see the Nets giving the Sixers a little bit of trouble. The Nets are I, I like I actually like that Nets team and D'Angelo Russell. For those um, you know, for those who wrote him off after he after he left the Lakers, has been you know been like basically all you know one you know all nba type performer all year great in the clutch and um they 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 could give the sixers some trouble but you're most likely you're most likely correct there and i mean i'm very very tough to pick against any of those four teams but if there is going to be an upset it's probably going to be the pacers beating the celtics 
Also, a good, yeah, good point on Brooklyn, though, because especially I saw today that uh, Embiid might be out for uh, game one. I mean, that's so, huge, right? I yeah, mean, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That might, get Brooklyn, that might get Brooklyn him. to six or seven, sure. Well, and the other thing about Philly is in the playoffs, and you saw this with Rondo when he played for the Celtics, the, Ben Simmons is a great player, but his complete inability to shoot, it hurts them in the playoffs. The Celtics did it to him last year. Like, if you have a guy that's not, you know, your big burly center – who you literally can just leave open from 15 feet and just, you know, you can play 15 feet off the guy, it really tends to bog down the offense in the playoffs. And, like, that Sixers team, from on a, from a talent perspective, should have swept the Celtics last year without Irving and, um, and Hayward. But, obviously, we know, we know what happened. It was uh, almost a sweep the other way. So, and, and a lot of that was... Simmons, Simmons, just inability to shoot. Like I said when the Celtics had Rondo, if you when the Celtics won the title with uh, the KG team, um, what a lot of folks don't remember is for big stretches of that series against the Lakers, the Celtics were were playing Eddie House and sitting Rondo just because the Lakers were just playing off Rondo and it screwed up the whole offense. So I'm sure the Nets are going to do that and. Philly Toronto in round two is a crazy series when it happens. Yeah, yeah but I have to uh, I have to dispute you a little, Roger, because this is a way different Philly team. They got a uh, Jimmy Butler, and uh, they also have uh, uh, off, they also also have a hell of a bench. Uh, they they got Boban uh, coming off the bench. Oh yeah, uh, and and an and an, an under the radar play to Mike Scott, who who's uh, who's very scrappy, but uh, but he's got a killer three. He's got a sweet three pointer. Like last year, he, he's a lot. He's a better version of of uh, Covington uh, last year. Yeah. The uh, I mean, they, uh, Boston, Boston they have Tobias Harris open. too, which is a pretty oh, big deal. Yes, yes, <laughs> Tobias Harris is a solid. Uh, he's going to get you sixteen twenty uh, every game. He's been doing that for about four or five years. He he's steady. He gets you sixteen twenty no matter what. But uh, like, like last year, to, to your point, they they they, they had Simmons to shoot. And they also uh, had Covington who couldn't hit uh, who couldn't hit anything last year. Who's a great, not a great, but a, a scrappy. Uh, you know, gritty player, but but uh, I, I think they got a better, better version of Covington and Mike and Mike Mike Scott. He, he does a lot of the same things, and and he's got a nice three point stroke. They're loaded so, on so they're, paper. So they're way better. Yeah, they're way better than uh, than last year's team. On paper, they're absolutely loaded, no question about it. Butler scares me a little in the playoffs too because he's such a head case. But when I mean, Not, when, when and, he's and Harris, right, and ha- ha- Harris is a great is a very. I mean, I liked that move for them. And apparently they want to keep those four guys together. Those are four basically max guys, right? Embiid, Harris, Simmons, and Butler. And they want to, They say they want to keep them together for the long term. So it'll be really interesting to see how that looks in their first playoff series. Yeah, they could do it. They could do it. You know, let's not forget about you know Redick. They they got guys that can hit the three. Oh, they can yeah. hit you on the inside and the outside. Like I said, Boban off the bench is a, is is a definitely a quality big man, and uh, and uh, and JoJo is going to be a year better. I, th- I think last year uh, Embiid was was just kind of uh, satisfied with winning the series and talking crap to like idiots like Hassan Whiteside and stuff like that. But but now I think he's he's taking that that next level where he really uh, he really really wants to be a, a top five player and he's a and great his team to a championship. He is he, he's taking a he's gotten a lot more mature. He's cutting down on you know the Twitter nonsense and stuff and he's really he's really stepped his game up and, and he he's uh, prepared to take Philly to the next level. And uh, if we go a little a little further, that's going to be my uh, finals uh, pick. Wow, wow! Yeah. I think they I think they have a lot of I, Toronto is tough man. That's a tough game. That, tough. That's another improved. Uh, that's a, totally a tough team, team for them to play. Yeah, they, the way they match up to them. Totally they, different than uh, that. That's another thing. Not to, everybody's going to sleep on Toronto because they're thinking about the old Raptors that uh, choked and everything. But they, they have they, Kawhi they, Leonard. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they broke up the the the, the Rose and Lowry, uh, uh, you know, mess that 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 couldn't get, that couldn't get past LeBron, and it's not that team anymore. No way. Not only Kawhi, but and also Pascal Siakam. Uh, Pascal Siakam, thank you, is going to be a player that, that nobody heard of that that you will hear of uh, once once you watch a couple uh, Toronto playoff games. Uh, he's phenomenal. And, I mean, he's he's yes. what what an impressive. I mean, he went from a, I mean from essentially a nobody to this. Like when Kawhi sits. It's like they don't even miss a beat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because, yes. Because pro- pro- probably when most, 
probably would most improved player. And, and also, uh, you, you got a, a Baku who I love. He just does all the dirty work, defense, rebounds, gets every loose ball. He makes threes, I, I, too. I, I love him. Yeah, I, I love Ibaka. I, I love the way he plays. And, and they uh, end Marc Gasol. Yeah. They traded for Marc Gasol, who's a guy who – that, that's that's a playoff guy right there, and they have Danny Green too. Another yeah, guy no, with another, a bunch of playoff team, yeah. experience. Van Vliet off the bench is yeah. is also impressive. Yeah, this is a deep team and uh, well coached for for a first year coach, a nurse. So they, they, yeah, like I said to open, that's it, going to be all seven game uh, wars uh, once it gets down to the semis. But I, I like Philly to squeak through uh, Toronto and. Uh, uh, man, man, if Marcus was there, I, I, I was uh, originally going to go with Boston to, to to get past, and you know we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but because uh, because Marcus is going to would be a key to be uh, guarding uh, Giannis a lot uh, to get past uh, Milwaukee in the second round. This this Celtics team's not. I mean, unless unless something changes, like where they flip a switch for the playoffs, there's no way they beat the Bucks. No way. Nah, even, I, even even with Smart, no way. Really? Nah, I, I would. I'm. I'm I, th- I think they are going to flip the switch, especially Kyrie. We'll see. I mean, the Bucks are really, really, really good. Really, oh. really. And I think a lot of people are going to under undersell them. But to me, they should be like a clear favorite to come out of the East. Like I, I, I can see your point with Philly, and I could see, I could see Toronto. But I mean, the Bucks are the best team in the NBA this year, right? I mean, there's no no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And for my money, Giannis is the best player in the NBA. I know he's not probably not going to win MVP, but he is like, oh. like uh, just unstop. I mean, he's just such a force, just a physical Who, force. You go, you go with Harden. I, I think, I think it should be Giannis. I, I think, think Harden's going to win it, though. Just the numbers. I, I mean, and Harden's had a great, great year. I'm not, not underselling him. But you know, if you look what's around Giannis and look at their record, it's. Uh, it's a pretty impressive season, and if you just just watch the guy on a night in night out basis, he is he. It's it's incredible. I mean, he averages like twenty eight and twelve, six, and it's like he still isn't fully developed as a player. Yeah. <laughs> like it looks like he can yeah. still get better. A coach, uh, uh, Buttonholes, really took him to the to the next level. He's he, he's a, a really great coach that. Uh, got out of the situation in Atlanta and, and I came here to an ideal situation and he's got them uh, they're, they're a great inside outside team it's uh, it's a, a lot of three pointers he, he encourages Brooke Lopez to shoot a lot of three pointers he should uh, Brooke, Lo- Brooke yeah. Lopez can really shoot and Middleton and then, is and another very them. good shooter they're going to be they're without Brogdon right for at least the first round but that should not impact them against I mean Detroit's not very good so I don't yeah. <laughs> Oh no! Nah. Like like I said, yeah. Let's not even waste the time talking about a lot of these first round matches. But uh, yeah, they're another deep team. Uh, guys off the bench like Isla Silva, who uh, you know can score, do a lot of things. You know, big big guys who can shoot. They're, uh, they're like I said, they're this uh, this the top four in the in the East. Uh, you you could pick pick anybody. But uh, and just just watch these games. They're gonna be incredible games. I've seen like uh, the last couple uh, uh, Bucks Sixers games that have been terrific. Uh, uh, the uh, the Raptors uh, Bucks games have been, have been terrific. Raptors uh, Sixers, whatever matchups you get, it's just going to be very entertaining basketball. Oh, I, I love the NBA playoffs. I'll tell you, on Saturday we're going to have the double TV set up at night with the U- UFC 236 on one screen, and then uh, Clippers Clippers Warriors and Spurs Nuggets on the other. It doesn't get much better than that, my friend. Unfortunately, the the Warriors. Uh, yeah, usually their games I turn off uh, once they good once they get up a good uh, twenty five burger in the second quarter. That's when I uh, look for other forms of entertainment. So, it's a good segue. It's a good segue. The West, <laughs> the West, not not top heavy like the East. I mean, there's the eight no, teams. The eight teams who make the playoff made the playoffs in the West are all very very good teams. No, you know? definitely not. As a, another spoiler, I got uh, I, I, at least one. I'll I'll go with two. I'll go with two of the lower seeds. Uh, uh, I, I'll go with the Spurs over the Nuggets, and I'll go with the the Thunder over the uh, the Blazers. I knew uh, you were going to say Thunder Blazers. Yeah, I, I and the Nuggets. I didn't. Like, I like I really. Like I like really disagree with Spurs over the Nuggets. I think the Nuggets. Uh, the Nuggets uh, are a good team, man. I don't like how they. Uh, I don't. I don't like how they. Play. I've watched the games versus Golden State. Not even competitive for for a, for a half a quarter. Uh, that's number one. I don't like, and also I don't like how they. 
they manipulated the uh, Blazers into the third seed. I don't like that pussy shit where they uh, they they sat they played the Blazers in, in, in one of the games in one of these last games and and they sat all their guys and, and they laid down. So, so the, they could have the Blazers get the third seed. So, so they won't. So they could avoid uh, Golden State in the uh, uh, until the uh, semis, which is which they're not going to get to. I don't, I don't like that, that that kind of mentality. And plus, they they really don't have uh, the experience. Although I do, I love uh, uh, Jokic. I, I he, love he's, Jokic. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's yes, an incredible he, player. Ter- terrific. Just as far as his his passing for for a big guy is is incredible, and they're very deep. I mean, they have. They have a they have Jokic and then they have a bunch of good shooters. Yes, and, Harris. Yeah, Harris is. A, but uh, I, I oh, just yeah, think they have gonna, Will Barton and they're, they're going to fall short in the Jamal Murray yeah. and then yeah. Millsap is obviously a very good player. The Spurs have that pedigree and they you know they they're capable. But I I, I think the Nuggets will, I think the Nuggets are going to work them over. I just don't think the Spurs have the the talent, unfortunately, to to keep up with the Nuggets. I think the Spurs are. Essentially, yeah. a two-man team, and those two guys. If if Greg Popovich wasn't the coach, this isn't really a playoff team in the West. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think Pop's going to work some magic with uh, so some of his uh, misfits, like Bryn Forbes and uh, guys that you never heard of. But uh, it, uh, I, I just like the exp- the experience, uh, and plus Aldridge and uh, and, and DeRozan are the, uh, have some experience. Correct. They do. They do. Not not the greatest experience but, as far as but the winning. most uh, <laughs> the most intriguing. Yeah, that's true. The most intriguing though will be the that Blazers uh, Thunder. The the Blazers uh, are going to miss Nurkic. Uh, Nur- Nurkic. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are picking the Thunder because of that. Um, the one thing to watch with the Thunder is like, I mean, they they for a while they looked like they could challenge the Warriors, right? I mean, they were you know Paul George was you know pretty much the consensus number three for MVP for a while. And they were, they were playing phenomenal, but there's something up with George. Like he has not over the last few weeks, hasn't been, hasn't been the same guy. And there, there's whispers that he's hurt. And so it's a, yeah, shoulder injury. So if he's not, if, if he's not a hundred percent and it's just the Russell Westbrook show, we see how that turns out in the playoffs. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to disagree with the <laughs> 45 shots. Yeah, there <laughs> again. But it's possible that they were just to easing off the gas with George later in the year, and that he'll come back. You know, just the rest will do him good, and he'll be good to go. But if he is, they should win the series because they're better. They're really better than the six seed. But if well, again, they're not they're, they're not as deep. But but with all the with all the days off and everything, they they could run and and if they're healthy, they could run. George and Westbrook, 40, 45 minutes. Uh, and, and when those two are at the top of the game, you're talking about, you know, arguably two of the top five players in, in the league. So the, I think the playoffs are suited for them with, with the days off and everything. It's not like in the regular season where you got to go back to back and all that. So al- although they're really lacking in depth, I mean, after those two, you got a- Adams does all the dirty work. And pretty much the only one else that could score is, is like a Schrader. That's about it. So most of the time, it's going to be just a, a two man show. But uh, but the the Blazers are really going to miss Nur- Nurkic, and uh, I- I've watched a lot of Ian e- Enos Cantor with the Knicks, and uh, he he gets at the he gets a double double within five minutes. But unfortunately, the the guy couldn't uh, he he couldn't defend the pick and roll if it was uh, me and you running it on Flanagan Court. Uh, the, the guy's uh, lost defensively, <laughs> and uh, very bad he, defensively. He, he, yeah, he's he's going to hurt them. So uh, I'm I'm sticking with the Thunder. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the Blazers, it was last year, right, that they were. They were were they the three? They were the two or the three and got swept right by the by the um, the Jazz, the Pelicans. Oh, the Pelicans. Was yeah, it yeah. the Pelicans? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think I think it was the Pelicans. But either way, they, I, I think they're going to come in hungry, and you don't want to be like the the high seed losing two years in a row. But I absolutely see. I mean, the series to me really is a coin flip, so I I, I absolutely can see picking the Thunder. The other series are interesting too, in my opinion. I mean, I think we we have a good idea who we think is going to win those series. But the Clippers have been a good, good spunky team all year. Doc Rivers has done an incredible job. With oh, that's them. a bad draw. Yeah, that's a bad draw. Though. And if they were playing anyone else, I would give them a reasonable chance to to make it interesting. But it wouldn't surprise me to see them take a game or two from the nah, Warriors. Yeah, unfortunately, no. But I, I I did like watching them during during the regular season. Uh, I I love how they. 
they, they just keep the game. Uh, they just they just try to stay in the game, and then all of a sudden, with about five minutes left in the in the first quarter, they they, they bring in Lou Williams and, and Montrez Harrell, and the game just turns around. Lou Williams can you know could score from anywhere. Montrez Harrell, he just every rebound, dunks, rebounds, loose balls, block shots. Uh, he he's a uh, he's my kind of player to watch, and uh, and, and they just t- take over the game. Uh, to two great bench guys, but Bristol Warriors, it's a, it's a different story. It's not good. it's going to be a, a sweep job, but uh, there's a lot of good things. If you're a Clipper fan, you should be uh, you should be very optimistic about the future because uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard will probably be uh, heading over there, and and and, and definitely, and they also made a good deal to get uh, they robbed the uh, it's it's ironically they robbed the Lakers. They got a Zubak who was going to be an uh, impressive player, and they robbed the Lakers. They got Zubak from Mike Muscala. Oh, I know that's. Is, I mean... yeah. We haven't talked about magic, but that's going to um, that's going to go yeah. down as a uh, what as a, that that's and that that's like an under the radar deal that not a lot of people will talk about. But that was like one of the stupider things of yep. in the M, in NBA moves in the last like five years. I mean, there's no reason for it. That kid, like you know how tough it is to find like a center who might actually be decent. <laughs> yeah, that kid always did well with with limited minutes. And I guess they just wanted somebody who could shoot a little. I, I, I mean, Mike Muscala is a bum, just a straight up bum. Anyway, awful, awful, yeah, awful, the, awful. The Clippers got a, a lot of a nice young talent. Uh, Gilgis Alexander, and uh, they made that deal with the Sixers. Uh, Shamet is a is a good looking player. Oh, he can shoot. He can. Yeah. He can really. Yeah, shoot. yeah, yeah. And in the next couple of years, we'll be talking a lot about them. But uh, unfortunately, they're gonna have to take their lumps. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't even see that. I don't see them winning one game, but uh, I would I would like to. Do it. Then Houston, Utah. Everybody and their brothers picking Houston, which makes sense. I mean, they've had they've had a heck of a year. Harden's incredible. The D'Antoni system. The Jazz are a good team, and they are the kind of team that you would think would be kryptonite a little bit for Houston. Good defensive team, a little bit of a slower pace. They got a guy in Donovan Mitchell who maybe. He's not Harden, but he can uh, he can do an impression <laughs> on some nights. Well so, coached too. Well coached. Very well I, coached. Both I, teams. I, both teams very well coached. Much like the Clippers, I really like them in the future, but this is a tough draw. I think it. I think it's a. It's a lot to ask. Uh, Houston's kind of been lying in the weeds uh, with a. Uh, you know, I think Paul's going to rent once again. Like I said, with the uh, with the guys on the Thunder, Paul's uh, it's going to help him that you know with the days off and the the playoff system, and uh, he, he's going to be able to he's going to be able to ramp up ramp it up. And uh, I, th- I think it's a tough matchup for the for the Jazz, but ho- hopefully I'm wrong because I, r- I really like them as a as a team. I, uh, they're, they're well coached. I like uh, the the French rejection, uh, Rudy Gobert. But uh, hey, Grace, hey, Grace and Allen put up forty. Oh, uh, forty! Yeah, <laughs> the, I, I love those. I love some of those box scores in, the, in that last game, especially that. Uh, did you happen to catch? Uh, unfortunately, it turned out to be Jaeger's uh, last game where Port- Portland just played like only six guys. I know and Anthony, S- Anthony Simons yeah, had thirty. He scored as many. Yeah, and he only had 38 <laughs> points in his whole career. That was, uh, yeah, that was there was some, uh, there, there was some some kind of uh, box scores those those last uh, those last garbage games. But uh, but yeah, I, I like you. Another another one of my uh, favorite players is uh, uh, Capella for Houston. I, I just love how he, he does it all. Just uh, block shots, rebounds, every loose ball. He's, oh, uh, and he he's runs the, the, the master court, of the pick man. and roll. Yes, I mean, he, that's that's uh, he's a he's he's an underrated player because yes. he's not your traditional. You know he's not out there knocking down jump shots, but he does all the little things. And how many how many easy baskets he gets just by outrunning his yep. guy down the court? Great yeah, that's player. what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, my, my boy Mitchell Robinson uh, turns well, into Gobert uh, is kind of similar, right? I yeah, mean, they're, they're, yeah. so him and versus Gobert, they could kind of cancel each other out a little bit. Mitchell yeah. Robinson, he's a block yeah. machine, baby. The guy yes, all he does that. is block shots. That that's what I'm hoping he uh, he models his career after of a uh, Capello type. Uh, there you go, and then you know he'll fit well when you have Kyrie and KD next year. So I was in yes. a, I was in a, I was in an Uber over WrestleMania weekend, started talking basketball with the Uber driver, and I told him I think it's happening. I think you guys I think you get them both. That's as mm. as a Celtics fan. Unfortunately, it's going to be more Kemba Walker and uh, something else, and uh, and we'll probably wind up with either the second or third, which I w- I wouldn't mind uh, John Morant. Uh, I, I wouldn't be too uh, dis- disappointed over losing out Zion if uh, John Morant, but that'll be. I don't be, think uh, Durant's going. I, I I feel like very very confident that Durant's going to New York. To the Knicks? Mm, nah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not confident of anything. These guys, and, uh, man, it's a different. It's a different world now. You know, 
Like, I think him and Kyrie, I think the whole thing with Kyrie's walking back what he said earlier and obviously it hasn't been a, a year a great year chemistry wise for for the Celtics Jesus. that I think I think I think that I think that I think it's in the bag I think you got them both yeah supposedly Durant's a real tight with uh I forget the Knicks assistant coach name it, it escapes me right now but uh, yeah supposedly they're real tight but, but yeah. if you got the two of them you're already the third best team in the east right yeah and then well so, you know, if, if uh, they finally figured out uh, if you if you're gonna tank, uh, go all the way. Don't do it like uh, don't miss the playoffs by one or two games like Sacramento. I think that's uh, why Vladdy Divas got pissed off and uh, he fired Jaeger because yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, you you don't get the fifteenth uh, pick. <laughs> you either get the first, uh, but yeah, you don't get the twelfth uh, pick and wind up with like a Nidala Keener or a Knox. Uh, you know, get get one of the top two picks like the Sixers did all those years. Yeah, that guy, Sam Presti, got axed for that. Not Sam Presti. I'm sorry. Gosh. The process. The, the, pro, the, process, the process guy, yeah. I can't think of his yeah. name. That's awful. Oh, uh, boy. But Both of us at the same time. Hinky, 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 Sam Hinky, Hinky yeah. 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 The, uh, yeah. But, yeah, that got him axed, too, and he gets to watch as this team's, like, the <laughs> best, best, best young team in the NBA. But, oh, before, so- before we're done with far done basketball, we haven't talked about this Porzingis thing. So, uh, no. look at in, the in Knicks. Pulling the wool over everyone's eyes, huh? In a way, it's a blessing that he kind of, that he's in Dallas because, uh, like, we only heard about the story like one day and it kind of disappeared. If if he had stayed in New York, it, it would have been like an ongoing uh, story where uh, you know every day in the in the news and the media. So it, it kind of uh, I haven't I really heard much about it since the story broke. So. We'll see. It's it's innocent until proven guilty. I don't want to you know speculate on that part too much. But uh, supposedly they told Dallas that there was a, you know there was some kind of ongoing investigation. So they didn't really. It wasn't a thing where they could where they hide it. And they they did a you know they shammed Dallas. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Craziness in the NBA. Craziness. Yeah. And, and, and also, Lord, who's your final? What what are your finals picks? We have oh, to do that. Uh, I, I already I think I already spit it. Philly and uh, Golden State. Who do you got? Oh, unfortunately, Golden State, man, yeah, the Warriors. Yeah. But before your picks, I meant to ask you, you, uh, you, you took in a Pelicans game. I and, did. Uh, and it's good to see a, a franchise more more uh, horrendous than the, the Knicks. We haven't talked about Anthony Davis, who was, it was a, real who was a, mo- a, a yeah. model citizen and all that. And now all of a sudden, you know, he's giving the finger to fans. And, uh, you know, I don't, it, was a pretty, a, it was a pretty sad yeah. state of affairs. That's a sad that situation building. when the so guy we, uh, you know, is healthy and he doesn't play and they didn't even trade him. And, so Katie you know, the and GM I, got axed over him. It's Katie and I sat, we sat 10 rows behind the Pelicans bench mm-hmm. for, um, for $27 each, the seats. So, I mean, these are, these are in Boston, $500 seats. Uh, we saw Pelicans, Kings. Pelicans actually won the game. Davis was there in street clothes and could have could not have looked less interested if he tried. Um, I was in the, I spent a bit of time in the Pelicans team shop before the game. It's a beautiful you know, you've been in there. It's a beautiful building, you know, in a um, nice team shop. But all the Anthony Davis stuff in the team shop was fifty percent off. Already mocked down. Yeah, it's a shame, my boy. Uh, you know, we have some uh, New Orleans representatives. We have some Pelicans fans. Our boy Jambalaya Jake, and uh, yeah. you know, last year he was. I mean, I psyched, give them uh, credit for not trading them to the Lakers. Fuck him. I mean, he, he's he got two years left on his deal, and he tries to force his way out through the media. I mean, it was a really, really – I mean, he's a great player, too. He's just as good as Giannis and Harden and all these guys. I mean, he's But not like only that, a, all, all they need is to, uh, a nice pick and that sign. Of, I mean, Randall's really emerged. He's on the verge of being on an all-star, and uh, – and, and you got Holiday. It's like they're not that far away. It's like it's, it's like yeah, I, I mean, they were they made the playoffs last year. Thank you. And they won around. <laughs> it, it's like well, I, I hate that these guys just pussy out, and they all just want to join the Warriors or whatever. It's just the uh, uh, well, this disgusting. is really blowing up in his face because there's yeah, he, he's not going to the Lakers now. There's yeah. I mean the Celtics at the very the Celtics are are will will give up the farm to get him even if he says he won't resign <laughs> honestly and and you see like they did it the Raptors did it with Kawhi the OKC did it with Paul George and it worked and you know you yeah. bring him in and see what happens but to, and i mean just to have a guy what is he 25 
25 and last year over the last over the second half of the year was very clearly the best player in the NBA. So it's you know not like a top 10 guy, not like a Kyrie Irving. Like this is a guy who's like just as good as Kevin Durant and LeBron James and everything else to just toss away a season in his prime. It's not like he's like Ted Williams who had to go to Korea. You know, he just just yeah. for no reason at all, no reason at all decided you know, I have two years left on my deal. I'm going to sign with LeBron's agent and try to force a trade. When he, he didn't realize that the owner there in New Orleans is a football owner, who, and it's it's the wife of the football owner, right? She does. He's, he's under contract. Fuck him, right? They they don't have to trade. Yeah. And, and then uh, they yeah, and then they they either, they either don't play him or they only play him 20 minutes. It's just sad. You know, you just. You, you want to take your kid to a game to, to see your best player if you're, a, you know, a Pelicans fan. And it's like, oh, you know, how do you explain to your kid that that he's not playing or he's only playing 20 minutes? It's it's a sad. It's, oh it's, it's man! Just a, so the, the game, just... the game after the game we went to. So we went yeah. to the game on Thursday and Saturday was the Lakers. And we had looked at going to Lakers Pelicans and the seats that I paid 27 bucks for for like 250. <laughs> but then, yeah. like the day before the game, LeBron announced they shut LeBron down for the season, and, yep. and Davis didn't play. So these yeah. poor fans who shelled out all this dough to go watch right. LeBron and the Lakers for freaking three hundred dollars seats get to watch, you know, two non-playoff teams, right? Where the best player on the court is you know, nothing against it, but the best player on the court is Julius Randle. Yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, brutal. Yeah, I blame the words. I, yeah, I'm sorry. We're a little all over the place. So, so, so uh, what are your final picks? Uh, your, so, your I'm gonna be finals? I'm gonna be boring, unfortunately, and go with the two ones. But I am going to, uh, and I'm gonna pick the Golden State to beat Milwaukee. But I'm gonna say in seven. Um, I think I, I I think Houston matches up really well to Golden State, and could take them out. I think they have the best chance to take them out. Um, they they should have taken them out last year and shot whatever some ridiculous o for twenty seven or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, or, Trevor Reza just missed another one. Yeah, I know. but I mean they still they were still ahead in the game. Like it's like but that, they, that's their game though. I mean that, that's that's the thing. It's 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 threes and layups. If the threes don't go down, you're gonna get you're gonna get some ugly games like that. That's that's their game. I, as a, I hate to say it, but you saw it in, in your game seven with uh, Terry Rozier and uh, and whatnot missing. You know if if you you still you got to take them no matter what but when you miss them you get you get games like that you, you got to take those wide open threes but yeah i think do? if if toronto could get get there i think they match up real well to the warriors too the warriors don't have any depth this year you know i mean they're starting five it's ridiculous right it's like a friggin all-star team it is an all-star team especially yeah. with cousins now like actually looks like demarcus cousins but they don't have anything behind those guys like you know, Iggy's got a fork sticking out of his back. It's, I mean, they got nothing. They have essentially nothing behind those guys. Yeah, and, they, they like brought Bogut back, and uh, it's yeah. going to be a... Uh, I mean, what the hell is he going to get? I mean, he he was cooked two years ago. Yeah, if, if you could take advantage of that that, that, that fifth, uh, that weak link, because that's what happened the, the one year that LeBron won it. He, he was uh, he was being guarded by fucking uh, Festus Ezeli, uh was guarding him late in the game. Right, and well, <laughs> and he was Cousins... Able to take advantage. Cousins doesn't... Is, isn't you know, especially because he's not, he still isn't moving as he was never a really good defensive player and, and, and he can't and, move. And the, so you can score on him, And if you can make this get in, and, and, you know, they've, they've got the thing where they played all these games over all these years and it's all the same guys, right? hundred games a year for four years in a row. And, you know, if you can take them seven, you can, you know, you, you got a shot, you got a shot. Yeah. So I could yeah, see him losing. They're less, I, I mean, they, they, it feels less inevitable, but it's still, it's impossible to pick anybody else just because of that starting five. And and there were a couple games where like Cousins uh, stopped the offense with his, you know, holding the ball oh, for yeah. 20 minutes and backing that. But I, I, I think they'll clean that up for the playoffs though. And I don't see it. I, I really wanted to pick your boys to make the finals, but once Smart went down, I, I, I think like, like Kyrie is really going to have a going to step up and, and put everything behind him and step up and have a great playoff. But I was counting on uh, on Marcus uh, to uh, as a big like, uh, you know stopper of uh, Giannis. Yeah. And if F. they F. can boys, if they F. can F. somehow F. beat the Bucks without him, they would have him back. The, the The Celtics play the Warriors really really tough too. Every time they play them and Philly too and Philly too. Yeah, yeah. but so they can you know if they got there they could they could beat him, but. 
it's a real I, I mean it's a great playoff because it it doesn't feel quite as much like a four foregone conclusion as I thought it was going to at the beginning of the year when they got cousins and he came back and he looked so you can at least see there's at least the possibility. I mean, they haven't looked invincible this year. Um, Denver's not going to do it. That that we can probably both agree. <laughs> nah, yeah, I got them <laughs> first round. On. You even you got them better than me, but I got them. Yeah, they're not ready yet. They're not ready yet. But Houston matches up well, and then you have some teams in the East that match up well. So I mean, you never know. OKC matches up pretty decent. I mean, I think we've seen that one before, but. It's uh, it's just it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. It would be good for for the rest of the league if the Clippers could take them six and start start that stamina, start start to move down that stamina needle for for some of those guys. No, nah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I know it's tough when you have like three of the best five players in the world out there at all times, you know. <laughs> but anywho. So John, I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to table baseball like we uh, thought. Let's, let's do two minutes. Because, two minutes. Uh, All right, I'll give you two as minutes. We're talking, that's Pete what Alonzo, that's what that's what Pete I hear Alonzo every time. just hit a friggin' bomb shot. Just hit a moonshot, and uh, for for the first time in a couple of years, I'm I'm excited about uh, baseball. I'm not saying uh, you know my Mets, but at least they at least they don't they didn't trade like uh, Pete Alonso for Chris Davis in the off season. They uh, got some youth. Uh, Jeff McNeil's looking good, so we got some youth on our team. But very quickly, I'll, I'll give a two minute baseball preview. In, uh, in 2017, uh, the World Series was, wasn't won in October. It was won at the trade deadline when uh, when the Dodgers traded for uh, Hugh Darvish, uh, the Yankees traded for Sonny Gray, and uh, Houston traded for Justin Verlander. They, uh, they, they won the championship on that day. And this year, I think at the trade deadline, whoever trades for Madison Baumgartner is going to win the uh, going to win the World Series. And unfortunately, it's going to be our, our hated uh, – the team that we hate, I think it's going to be the Yankees. I think that's why they saved the, uh, they, they passed on, uh, on Harper and uh, Machado. I, th- I think uh, they're going to trade for Baumgartner and sign him long-term and, uh, and he's going to lead them. I mean, to it's, the a great, it's a great year. move if they do it. I mean, he's a, he's incredible. That's the yeah. only thing they're missing to me. They got the offense, they got the bullpen. Uh, they're just missing that start. And I think that's what, that's what it's going to come down to uh, basically. Yeah, and the Sox are off to a tough start here, but no, I, but that I, was, I think uh, they think they're going to write the city. ship. That was a shitty schedule, and I've never seen that before. Uh, I, I'm sure, but if you Boston uh, guys haven't haven't uh, you know been celebrating uh, 15 championships in the last 10 years, I'm sure you guys would have cried about it more. But that was a that was a rough uh, way to start the start the season. That was a rough road trip. Yeah, and Sale just that doesn't doesn't look quite right, but I think he'll round into form. So try try not to get too worked up about the first few weeks of a baseball season. I think that's a good uh, that's a good rule of thumb. But yeah, well, for a Mets fans, uh, sometimes Alonso, that's, that's, though, that's the only yeah. week. Yeah, that's the only weeks we could uh, we can get worked up. But yeah, there's a lot of all... young talent. I mean, he's he's a good player, and then um, you have Vlad Guerrero Jr. coming up, Acuna in Atlanta. Oh, Chad those guys Campbell's on the. Guy. the you know who's very impressive? Those guys on the Nationals are impressive. I can see why they passed Soto, off, uh, Soto and, and Robles. Yeah. yeah, those those two are going to be beasts. Yeah, but Pete Alonso has been absolutely destroying me in my fantasy baseball game this week. Unfortunately, so. It just did another one. I know. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I just checked my score, and uh, I'm trying to Suck keep it, up. Sad I'm Campbell. trying to keep up. I had uh, I had Justin Smoke, who hit a three run bomb against the Red Sox, so that was like bittersweet. But anyway, we don't talk about that stuff too much here. But can't avoid fantasy. I, we I will to avoid it all year. I try to avoid it, folks, during football season, but uh, and even during baseball, you can't avoid the fantasy. Uh, we guys. will. Uh, I would argue that baseball is a, is a game that even someone who doesn't like, like if you're not like a fantasy guy, like it's just inherently that's kind of how baseball is, right? Baseball. No, nah, it's, it's so long. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Have a no, break. and it's yeah. about and I can I can understand it with football because it's more of a team game. In baseball, I mean, it really is about you know like hitting three hundred, right? <laughs> and how many home yeah, runs yeah. you stats hit. Stats driven. Yeah, stats yes, driven. Stats sure. driven. Exactly. Anywho. So, John, we're going to try to make this at least a bi-weekly thing. I'd love to do weekly now that all my traveling is uh, all my traveling's complete. But it's been great getting back together with you. We even read our, uh, we even did our our, our uh, advertising for the site, which um, you know our loyal listeners will know that that was a first for me right there. I hope it sounded okay. And um, yes, please. cowboy, it was a great. Uh, it was, 
we we just came off a great weekend, and uh, if any, there was there was just one regret. We had we had different uh, entertainment and, uh, and transportation schedules that uh, you know we we didn't get to hang too much. So I'm glad we uh, we caught up here. And uh, but but plus we got a lot of uh, episodes coming in the spring and summer. So we'll oh man, sure. well we're getting together. Uh, yeah. right, right at the beginning of May, right for um, yeah, all summer. Yeah, plus money all in the summer. bank. We always we got we got plenty of hangs. We have but, extreme but, uh, rules. We got everything, John. You're gonna come play basketball with us. We've got two games course. in the books already. Yeah, St. Mary's. Uh, well, I've plenty, kept up with apps. my. Um, I've kept up with my, with my physical. Um, you know, that I was telling you after New Year's, on telling the listeners that I had uh, turned over a new leaf and taken up physical fitness. I've kept up with that. So the basketball games have have been good. Um, you know, I feel like Charles Barkley down there a little bit. You'll have to take knock me off my high horse. You and you and Ryder are becoming jujitsu warriors, and gonna hire you guys as bodyguards. Absolutely, absolutely. He's got a nice belt. So, <laughs> yeah. If, if, for our listeners, if you ever get a chance to take a nine-year-old who's really into wrestling to WrestleMania, you got to do it. This kid, uh, this kid uh, put a smile on my face all weekend with how happy he was. So, it was good stuff. I did not get to hang quite as much with the with the late night crew as normal, but it was uh, well well worth it for to see happiness in the eyes of the child. You know what I mean, John? Yeah, made up for the uh, the, the rumble flu, unfortunately. The rumble oh, sickness weekend. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But very good. So we'll be back next week, hopefully. Listeners, please uh, shoot us a message in the chats or shoot us a message individually if you want us to talk about some other stuff. We watch all sports. I don't watch hockey, so if you want hockey, it's yeah, the Bruins, have to be a the Bruins one-man just did it. show it's a, good thing you don't, it's a good thing you don't watch hockey. The Bruins just did it. But boxing, UFC... I can it's talk. So, I can so do sad tennis. When the team loses. It's so sad when a Boston team loses. Eh? If one it's very has depressing. to, if one has to lose, that's the one I would pick. Since, <laughs> I, don't, since, I, don't, since I don't give a oh, shit about it, you so. just broke Scott Criscolo's heart. It's okay. It's okay. Me and Scotty are good. Uh, so for Mr. Damato from the Cowboy, we're out of here. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, brother. Peace.